in the 2016 election and the possible involvement of the Trump campaign. What happens now, including whether, when and how much of Mueller's report will be made public, is in the hands of President Trump's newly installed Attorney General William Barr. Let's first go to our Justice Department correspondent, Pete Williams. Pete, walk us through what happens now. All right, so to be very clear, this is all we know, that Bob Mueller has submitted his report to the Attorney General, period. We are not going to hear today what the report says. And if you, as you've noted, Lester, uh, Barr has made a commitment to give Congress as much as he can, but we don't know how long that process is going to take. So that's the first thing. The second thing, and this is important to emphasize, this means that the special counsel's work is done because the rules specifically say that he does not submit a report until at the conclusion of the special counsel's work. So that means Bob Mueller is no longer, as of a short time from now, the special counsel. There'll be no more indictments from the special counsel. Now, one question had been, might he at the last minute file indictments? That didn't seem likely, uh, but it doesn't seem now that that's going to happen. So no more indictments. Uh, and that means that during the entire course of his work assigned to determine whether anyone in the Trump campaign meddled in the election, he never found evidence to submit a criminal prosecution accusing anyone of that. So it doesn't mean that the investigating stops because, remember, Robert Mueller was part of the Justice Department, the special counsel's office. The work will go on just as it was going on before Robert Mueller was appointed special counsel. It'll be carried on by the Justice Department, by the U.S. attorneys in New York and here in the District of Columbia. But Robert Mueller's work is done and his report has been handed to William Barr. Now we'll have to find out when Barr is going to tell Congress what it says. But one other point. All the rules say here is that when Barr hands his report to, when Mueller hands his report to Barr, it will be very bare bones. If he follows the rules, all the rules say is that he submits a report saying who he prosecuted and who he declined to prosecute. And further, the rules say when William Barr submits a report to Congress, all he'll say is any time the Justice Department blocked a move by the special counsel. Now, that's what the rules say. Clearly, Congress and the public expect to hear a lot more about what the Mueller report says. Uh, but those but if they stick to the rules, that's all that's going to uh, that's all that's going to happen. And clearly that won't satisfy anybody. Let's yeah, that is a debate that is to come. No doubt, Pete. We're waiting for reaction from the White House. NBC's Kristen Welker is there. Kristen, the president has talked about this in recent days. He would like to see this report made public in some form. Uh, are we hearing from the White House now and are we expecting a quick rebuttal here or a pre buttle if you will? What we are expecting, Lester, is a quick response from the White House, from the president's legal team. We have not yet gotten those statements. We anticipate the statements will acknowledge the fact that the special counsel's report has now been turned over to the attorney general and will say that they will weigh in more once they know more if, in fact, that does happen. So we are checking and refreshing our phones to try to get those statements, Lester. Just to put this moment into context, though, there is perhaps Perhaps no other issue that has loomed larger over this White House than the special counsel investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 election. It has loomed over the president's foreign policy, various trips that he has taken, his domestic policy. President Trump is in Florida right now. Before he left, he weighed in on this report and unleashed a new round of attacks, referring to it again as a witch hunt, as a hoax. This is the type of language, of course, that we have heard from this president. It is a political strategy for this president, and it gives you a window into what we can expect as he prepares to hit the campaign trail to fight for his reelection. Now, as you said at the top, Lester, President Trump has called for this report to be made public, but underscoring what Pete has said, ultimately, that will be up to the attorney general, Lester. All right, Kristen, we'll stand by uh, when we get word of a White House reaction. In the meantime, Ari Melber, host of The Beat on MSNBC, joins me. Pete noted there's no more indictments, but were there not sealed indictments that we would expect to find out what those were about? If there were any other sealed indictments, uh, we would expect them to be unsealed very soon. Uh, as Pete was reporting, and I think it's important for everyone to understand, if this is the end and the Mueller report is submitted tonight now and there are no more 
indictments or other developments unsealed in the next moments, then yes, what you're looking at is a snapshot of the results of 20 months of this investigation. What are those? Well, 37 total indictments to date, 34 of people, three of organizations related to the Russian hacking. Many of those have proceeded. As discussed, this means the next thing that would happen is, number one, the DOJ looks at this material and figures out what might become public, what might be shared with Congress. And number two, there are open cases. Uh, viewers will remember, Roger Stone was indicted by Bob Mueller and awaits trial. The D.C. prosecutors and the other regular machinery of the Justice Department will move forward. It is a big deal that after 20 months, this is where Bob Mueller got to. And if there are no other unsealed indictments, it would suggest that he found a lot of people did crimes, as you see on your screen, but that he never ultimately charged election conspiracy or collusion. We've heard all along that a sitting president cannot be indicted. If there is something in this report, and this is just a, a wide open question, if there's something in the report that Barr deems potentially impeachable, is he re required to give that information specifically to Congress? He is not required under the rules to share more than the ending and any areas where he or previous attorneys general have disagreed with Bob Mueller. So in the, in the question you pose, if there was an attempt to do something to go after, say, the president or his family, and Bob Mueller was overruled, which could be legally allowed, Congress would learn about that. And then it might ultimately tell the public about that. This has been difficult to follow, even for those of us who follow this for a living. But there were other investigations. We know the, uh, the Southern District of New York, a federal prosecutor, has been looking at a case that may implicate the president. That's a separate matter, continues on one way or the other. Exactly, Lester. And as you say, that's a separate matter that grew out of this probe and was handed to New York because Michael Cohen initially sat down with Bob Mueller's investigators, the president's former lawyer, and as they found things that they thought went outside of this, this investigation, which has always been about three things, the attempted uh, collusion or conspiracy around the election, any crimes arising out of that, what people have heard about as obstruction, and then this additional authority that Bob Mueller got to go into Paul Manafort, Donald Trump's former campaign chair, and look at his activities, which was authorized. Anything else they hand back out. So as you say, the president's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, who's reporting to prison, and anything else in that probe continues in New York. The Roger Stone case continues in Washington. Um, but what we have here in this news tonight that America has been waiting for is what appears to be, in Bob Mueller's view, the resolution of his ambit of his case of what he was looking at, election-related conspiracy, known as collusion, and the crimes arising out of it, the obstruction. And so if he found things that weren't chargeable, but he thinks Bob Barr should know about, they could be in that report. We don't know at this hour whether what he's handed in tonight, breaking news moments ago, is a few pages or 50 pages, or as some former reports in previous investigations have been, hundreds of pages. And just to catch folks up who may be tuning in, the headline of the hour here is that the Mueller report is finished. It has been, under law, delivered formally to the attorney general's office. We want to go right now to former CIA director at NBC News intelligence analyst John Brennan. Uh, John, this ultimately was a national security investigation to the extent it, it really centered on Russian interference in the election. Are you afraid that politics may gloss over some of the important indictments in this case so far? Well, unfortunately, I think politics has taken over the whole discussion over the last two plus years. I think we as Americans need to be quite concerned about foreign interference in our elections. And I'm hoping that the government is going to uh, do some things that will address some of those shortcomings that allows some of those foreign actors and others to try to shape our electoral landscape. So I'm glad that Bob Mueller was able to carry out his mandate. Uh, we are now moving to the next phase. As Ari says, we, what we know now is that his work has been completed, but he has probably handed off a fair number of investigative threads to uh, U.S. attorneys. Um, and uh, now I think uh, it's going to really be up to William Barr, who I trust is going to do the right thing in terms of sharing with the Congress what he needs to, but also trying to make sure that the American people are going to have as much insight and transparency into this, given that it has consumed the national narrative over the last two plus years. And it's important to note that Mueller has done his job here uh, at a time battered by a hurricane of politics and criticism and slings and arrows, of, you know, pick whatever you want. Is this a good day for U.S. justice, no matter how this plays out? 
I think it certainly is. I think we all owe a debt of gratitude to Bob Mueller. And uh, despite what might be said about Bob Mueller by Donald Trump, uh, Bob Mueller has carried out his responsibilities, I think, with tremendous professionalism. And he has kept a tight hold over the information. And so I think what we now need to be prepared to do is to accept his findings and to move on so that we can, in fact, address the issues that I think most Americans are concerned about. Let me go, uh, if I can, back to Pete Williams right now, just to get a little bit more about the timeline of how things work. So the attorney general has it. Has a clock begun ticking to the point that he has to offer some of these findings to Congress, or is that open-ended? It's open-ended. There is no requirement in the special counsel rules on how soon the attorney general has to tell Congress what, Barr's, uh, what Mueller's report says. But he has submitted, it's a one-page letter that William Barr, the attorney general, submitted to the chairman and ranking members of the House and Senate Judiciary Committees, and he says, I may be in a position to share with you, that means those four people, to advise you of the special counsel's principal conclusions as soon as this weekend. Now, let me, let me explain what that means. What he's saying is, uh, it's what we just talked about earlier, Lester, that what the special counsel rules say is that when Mueller submits his report to Barr, he will report on what cases he prosecuted and what cases he declined to prosecute. Uh, well, let me just read you this paragraph. He says, the special counsel has submitted to me today a quote, now he's quoting from the rules, a confidential report explaining the prosecution or declination decisions, meaning the cases he didn't prosecute, that he has reached as required by, and then he cites the rule. I am reviewing the report and anticipate that I may be in a position to advise you of the special counsel's principal conclusions as soon as this weekend. That's a very small category of information. That's just what is uh, in the rules about cases Mueller decided to prosecute and not prosecute. But then the attorney general goes on to say, um, separately, in other words, beyond that, I intend to consult with Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein and Special Counsel Mueller to determine what other information from the report can be released to Congress and the public consistent with the law, including the special counsel regulations and the department's longstanding practices and policies. I remain committed to as much transparency as possible, and I will keep you informed of the status of my review. So that's consistent with, as you recall, what Barr said during his confirmation hearing in January, that he feels if he's going to follow the rules and follow the law, he's hemmed in here about how much he can share, because the Justice Department policies generally say you don't release publicly people who were investigated but not charged. Having said all that, he says, I'm, you know, I want to give you as much information as I can, and I'll get back to you on that. But he does not set a date for that, Lester. He doesn't say when he'll get back to uh, tell Congress what more he can tell them beyond the bare facts of who Mueller decided to prosecute, which we already know, and who he declined to prosecute. All right, Pete, we want to go to back to the White House now. Kristen Welker, I understand we're hearing from the president's legal team. We are. Let me read you the statement. This is from Rudy Giuliani and Jay Sekulow, counselors to the president, who say this, Lester. We're pleased that the Office of Special Counsel has delivered its report to the Attorney General pursuant to the regulations. Attorney General Barr will determine the appropriate next steps. Now, I can tell you that this response uh, has been planned for some time as they have been playing the waiting game right along with the rest of us. They were anticipating that the report would be released imminently. Uh, and so here again is the statement. What's going to happen now? Again, they're going to have to wait and see how much, if any, of this report they are able to review. We do know that they had a counter report prepared, Lester, but they're not sure that they're going to release that. Will they release it in their entirety? They'll have to wait and see. But again, the statement right now from the president's legal team is that they are pleased that this step has been taken. Again, no other issue has loomed larger over this president. No other issue has roiled him more than this special counsel investigation. So now they wait to see how much of the report, along with the rest of us, they're able to actually review, Lester. All right, Kristen, thank you. The president, of course, not in the White House. He traveled to uh, Florida earlier today. Kelly O'Donnell is down there right now. Uh, Kelly, what are you hearing from there? 
And Lester, the president's press secretary is also traveling with him in Florida, and Sarah Sanders has just tweeted, the next steps are up to Attorney General Barr, and we look forward to the process taking its course. The White House has not received or been briefed on the special counsel's report. So Kristen was telling us about the president's personal lawyers. That is the statement from the White House. The president is here at his Mar-a-Lago resort for the weekend, where he today met with Caribbean leaders. But tonight, perhaps a coincidence of timing, the Palm Beach County Republican Party is holding its Lincoln Day dinner at Mar-a-Lago. And among those speaking is Lindsey Graham, who is the Senate Judiciary Chairman, one of those four individuals that Pete Williams has been explaining would potentially get a briefing, sort of the first look about what was in the Mueller report, what has been transmitted to the Attorney General. On the president's public schedule, there's no indication that he is to attend this dinner, but again, it is being held at Mar-a-Lago, and one could see a scenario where if the president feels good about these initial reports, that he might want to be among Republicans gathered uh, at a fundraiser on his own property, or certainly in the company of Lindsey Graham, who might be able to advise the president on potential next steps or confer with him in some way. We've seen how Lindsey Graham has become such a close confidant of the president. Again, the president's scheduled to be here in Florida through much of the weekend. Lester? Kelly O'Donnell, thanks very much. I want to go to Chief White House Correspondent Hallie Jackson at our Washington Bureau. And Hallie, the mantra from the president for months and months has been there's no collusion. Yeah. It's a witch hunt. Have they telegraphed what the, the next mantra is going to be now in this waiting period where we try to find out what's in this? Yeah, likely, Lester, from what we have been hearing from our sources and based on our reporting, the White House will continue that mantra, essentially, expect them to try to find whatever sliver of hope they can, essentially, to seize on this report if it stops short. And again, we don't know what is in the actual report itself, but if it stops short of any legal liabilities for the president, it will be framed and it will be talked about from the White House perspective as essentially a victory and as vindication. I can tell you that at this point, we know the campaign, for example, has already been fundraising off of this Mueller report. Expect this to be a political talking point for the president. It is important here to draw a line now between any legal liabilities and the political liabilities from the president, because now the conversation here in Washington is turning to what is in this report and when will we get to see it? How much of it will Americans get to see? You have now over on Capitol Hill, the ranking member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Senator Mark Warner, just in the last couple of moments, calling for as much of the report to be released to the rest of the country publicly as possible. There are parts that people don't get to see because, for example, it involves grand jury information or classified information. And Senator Warner, among other Democrats, to be sure, want to make sure that the report in full is transmitted over to Congress so that lawmakers can see it as well. Bill Barr has said he committed to lawmakers that he wanted transparency, but he would not commit to releasing the full report when he was in his confirmation hearing. And the president has said he wants Americans to be able to see it, but he said it is up to his attorney general to decide when and how and how much to be able to release to the public. And just to take a beat and step back here, remember, Robert Mueller, Right, was appointed in May of 2017, just several months into the Trump administration. It came on the heels of an incredibly chaotic time inside the Trump administration after the firing of former FBI Director James Comey. There had been a series of personnel changes. The president was feeling under pressure after, of course, the departure of his former national security advisor, Mike Flynn, who has been caught up in this, that triggering many of these steps. Now here we are, 675 days later. The president has railed against Robert Mueller from nearly the very beginning. He has been frustrated. It has triggered the president uh, to send, for example, tweets at times lashing out at not just the special counsel, but people in that orbit as well. Uh, so it, it is a significant milestone in this administration, the end of the special counsel's investigation and the handing over of the report from Robert Mueller to Bill Barr. We can't emphasize enough, we still don't know what's in it, but it is significant that it is possible that as early as this weekend, lawmakers may get a chance, uh, or at least Bill Barr may be able to talk about what he has seen, share it with the White House, because at this point, the White House hasn't seen it yet, Lester. Yeah, you're referring to that letter that the Attorney General sent to uh, congressional leaders and said, I may be in a position to advise you of the special counsel's principal conclusions 
as soon as this weekend. Ari Melber is, is back. You've had a look at that letter. What else stands out? Yeah, there are three big headlines here as we process the breaking news that Bob Mueller has finished his 22-month probe. He has filed his report with the Justice Department. The three headlines, as I see it now that we've gotten some time with the information, is number one, Attorney General Bill Barr says the Justice Department never had to override anything big that Bob Mueller wanted to do. That's significant, especially when we think about all the times that there were concerns about pressure or the White House potentially interceding. That applies not only to Barr's tenure, but the previous people overseeing Bob Mueller, which was Rod Rosenstein and, as we know, Jeff Sessions had recused. There was a gentleman named Mr. Whitaker that people may remember who was briefly in charge. So that's a big headline. Uh, and that is basically the Justice Department saying, with Bob Mueller's stamp of approval, uh, that he was never interfered with in a way that resulted in a change to what he wanted to do. For example, who he wanted to search or who he wanted to charge. That's number one. Number two, Lester, as our colleagues have been emphasizing, and I don't think we can emphasize this enough because we are in fairly unusual territory, number two is Mr. Barr just told the country he may have further information for Congress as soon as this weekend. And if he gives that information on Saturday or Sunday uh, to Democrats in the Congress, I think it's a fair bet they may want to share it themselves or give their views on it. So we are now in for a fast-paced weekend if, Bob, if, if Mr. Barr is right, if Bill Barr is right, and we're going to see Congress learn key information. That's about who he charged and who he didn't. We do know who he charged. So it's who he didn't that could be very interesting depending on how that information is shared. For example, presidential family members who were investigated and cleared or somewhat cleared. Uh, number three is the longest term, which is Mr. Barr is also saying that he is going to do this process going forward. The Mueller probe now is effectively over, but he says he will consult with Mueller and Rosenstein about any other additional information. Our colleague Pete Williams was explaining that they don't have to release a lot under the rules. This is Mr. Barr saying they might go beyond the rules with Mueller's input and potentially release other information in the future period. That's beyond this weekend, and he didn't put a timeline on that. Because a little will require a lot more. If you had just leaks from members of Congress with their individual spin on it, it only raises more questions. Absolutely. And there's a lot of people who have strong feelings about this, people who've been caught up in the investigation, people at the White House, people with political views, people with concerns about things that may not be illegal but implicate the national security interests of the United States. This was, as many have pointed out, also a counterintelligence probe. So I think it's very interesting. Uh, another observation I'll make, and this goes beyond exactly what we know, but my interpretation is it seems that Mr. Barr is going out of his way here to emphasize that he is really in concert with Mr. Mueller. We're not seeing a rollout here that suggests any tension. He has used the rules to dictate and state to Congress and now to the world that they didn't have a disagreement about who to charge which goes a long way towards the public faith and integrity in this process. And now he's saying, I'm going to keep Mueller involved. Again, he doesn't have to. Mueller finished his report. He handed it in. He's saying, I'm going to keep Mueller involved in this other longer-term process of what else we could release later. And for a document that remains unseen by virtually everyone except the Attorney General on the Mueller team, it is drawing a tremendous amount of reaction. Sudden impact, I think, is a fair characterization. Kelly O'Donnell in Florida with the president at his Mar-a-Lago, Florida estate. And Democrats are weighing in. Kelly. Democrats are saying swift transparency is what they want to see now. After waiting for the end point in the Mueller investigation, one of them, Mark Warner, who is a, a senator of Virginia, who is the ranking member on the Senate Intelligence Committee, he and Richard Burr of North Carolina have worked together uh, in doing their own investigation and have been praised for their bipartisanship. Mark Warner is saying in a statement that Attorney General Barr should craft a declassified version of this report as soon as possible and release it to the public. He goes on to say, any attempt by the Trump administration to cover up the results of this investigation into Russia's attack on our democracy would be unacceptable. We're hearing from other Democrats as well who want to now point the pressure on the attorney general to say, look at what has been included, find a way to sift it into a form that can be consumed by the public. And as you have been talking about in your conversation, it's one thing for lawmakers who have clearances to read this, but is there a form, since the public has paid for it tens of millions of dollars, how quickly can the results to whatever extent be known? Democrats are calling for that. The president has 
largely said he wants the Mueller report to be public, too. And during his confirmation hearing, we remember that uh, William Barr was saying he supported the idea of making public as much as would be possible. One area, for example, that typically is never made public are the findings within a grand jury. I'll leave to Ari to decipher all the legal issues there, but the message from Democrats is get it out fast and get it out as completely as possible to the voters who paid for it. Lester? Kelly O'Donnell, thank you. And Danny Savalas is a criminal defense attorney and an NBC News consultant. We, we have an understanding of what the law says about all this, but in practicality, is there a timeline that you could suggest as how this is going to all play out, Danny? There is no timeline, but it's important to understand that the report in its form that was submitted today is something we likely will never see. But we can guess at its contents, and it really comes down to three different categories. Prosecution decisions and non-prosecution decisions, which is divided into two categories. People that did bad things, but not enough to prosecute them, and then maybe people who really didn't do anything wrong at all. We already know largely who was prosecuted because of the speaking indictments in this, uh, during the course of this investigation. We're looking at some of them now. So many folks indicted and so much detail included. Mueller has been dropping crumbs the entire time. So at least as to those who have been prosecuted, we have a sense at least who those are. It's the real, the real question ultimately is who did bad things, but not quite enough, not to reach probable cause such that they should be indicted. From here, the real report is going to be the bar report. The regulations only require a notification to Congress, but those are a floor, not a maximum, not a ceiling. Barr can go beyond that and subject to two huge limitations, grand jury materials, which have to remain uh, secret, and also uh, counterintelligence type materials or classified materials. Those should remain secret because counterintelligence investigation goes on maybe for a long, long time from here. That's a totally separate area. Yeah, this is a, a more of a political question than a legal one, but I think the two come together here. There may be some Democrats who still want to impeach this president. They're looking at that report with the thought that we need to know what's in there in its entirety. How do those two, how are those two things reconciled? It's very important that it, the commission of a crime is neither a necessary nor a sufficient ground for an impeachment. So even if there is a crime, for example, something committed uh, long before the president took office, that may not be an impeachable crime. And yet, if there was some abuse of power that really wasn't even within the purview of the Mueller investigation, Congress can consider that, too, as an impeachable offense. So the Mueller report doesn't speak directly to the standards, the traditional standards for impeachment, but it will inform Congress, and Congress will have some, particularly the House, who uh, accuses in any impeachment, will have some very difficult decisions to make. All right, thank you. Let's go to uh, Hallie, uh, Hallie Jackson right now, and I understand we're hearing uh, from members of Congress. We are from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Lester, as well as Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer releasing a joint statement just in the last 20 seconds or so, uh, and essentially saying that now that the special counsel has submitted his report to the attorney general, it is imperative that the attorney general provide the full report, its underlying documentation, and its findings to Congress. And I want to read you some of this because I think, Lester, this is going to to be where you will see Democrats beating the drum over the next several days or several weeks here. Speaker Pelosi, Senator Schumer say Attorney General Barr must not give President Trump, his lawyers or his staff any sneak preview of the special counsel's finding or evidence. And the White House must not be allowed to interfere in decisions about what parts of those findings or evidence are made public. Uh, the two of them end their statement by saying that the American people have a right to truth and that the watchword, they say, is transparency. Expect to hear that from Democrats over the next several days, Lester, uh, as Nancy Pelosi sort of sets the bar, sets the tone for what she wants her caucus to be focused on here, making sure that people can see what Robert Mueller had to say, see those findings, and then those, listen, shots fired over at the White House saying, hey, don't share this information 
inappropriately with the White House, with the White House Counsel's Office. We should note, Lester, that while the president is in Mar-a-Lago right now, where Kelly O'Donnell is, our colleague there uh, at our White House unit, he is surrounded by a number of his top aides, not just Press Secretary Sarah Sanders, the Deputy Press Secretary as well, but also his White House Counsel, his uh, Acting Chief of Staff, Mick Mulvaney. Uh, it's interesting that his counsel is there. Pat Cipollini doesn't often travel on these trips, particularly down to South Florida, but it was our indication earlier in the day, Lester, that the White House was in a protective posture, having a feeling, as did much of Washington, that in fact this news would happen today. Lester. And there you see on the screen the tally of the, uh, of the Mueller investigation over these 22 months. Let's go back to Kristen Welker at the White House. Kristen, the, the level of anticipation the last few days has been nothing like many of us experience. We've seen it certainly in our newsroom. I can only imagine what it was like at the White House today waiting for this. Well, the anticipation was building and growing throughout the day with reporters uh, huddling with officials here, officials huddling in meetings, trying to determine what exactly was going to happen. And I just want to underscore uh, something that Sarah Sanders said, which is that they have not been briefed on this. So essentially, uh, we were told, and, and some of the officials here were alerted really just moments before we were. I want to go back to some of the discussion that you were just having about how much of this report will be released. One of the big concerns here inside the White House, Lester, I can tell you, based on my conversations, not only today, but over the past several days and weeks, uh, is that there will be information that's released that's damaging about an individual who hasn't necessarily been charged with a crime. So if, in fact, Barr does decide to release some of the information, you can bet that the White House uh, will try to be very careful about what specifically is released, and they'll try to have a say in that, undoubtedly, because that is a concern here for the administration. It does come against the backdrop of talk of impeachment within the Democratic Party. Now, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has said that it's way too early for that. She is not in favor of impeachment, and remember, she kept urging her caucus to hold off on that type of discussion until this report was out. And so that sort of raises the stakes as we have this discussion about just how much of this report will be released. This becomes a campaign issue, Lester, for President Trump. Again, we've heard him frequently lash out at the special counsel. You can expect him to do that on the campaign trail. And don't forget, the investigations are growing on Capitol Hill, even as this one has now wound down, Lester. All right, Kristen, thank you. Let me turn to Ari Melber, and I know you've got a, a broadcast on MSNBC you have to leave. So I want to get your final thoughts on this. And, and with the thought that America, the American people have been on edge about this now for 22 months. The, the virtual, the entire presidency has been on edge over this. We understand the rules of this, but will, will there be a preponderance of a feeling that Americans have to know what's in this? I think there's overwhelming interest, and you see uh, the attorney general in his concise letter alluding to that, which he did also discuss under oath at his confirmation hearing, that they would look to transparency given these special issues, and that he will consult with Bob Mueller and Rod Rosenstein in the, in the time ahead about how do you release that. Uh, as mentioned, there are certain things like grand jury material where you need a judge to even get into that. But there are other things that will be judgment calls. I think the public will be extraordinarily interested not only in the conclusions, which is ultimately the 37 indictments we know about and whatever else Congress learns about that might be negative or that affects America. Uh, but beyond the conclusions, it's the details, the evidence, the reasoning. Uh, sometimes it has felt like America has been going through law school together uh, as we pour over these details and, and try to learn about and have faith in our system. If there's a positive silver lining to some of this, and we don't know all the details yet, one silver lining is if AG Barr, if Attorney General Barr's letter is correct, and we don't have reason at this hour to think it's not, and Bob Mueller can speak for himself, uh, it is a great headline for America tonight uh, that Bob Mueller was never overruled by the Justice Department, that the system worked even as he proceeded on sensitive and, yes, highly politicized investigations given the climate, and he was allowed to do his work. And that when he indicted people, including a, a campaign chair of a, of a major candidate and a lawyer of a sitting president and other individuals, that work continued. That's a part of the system that's working tonight, even as we all wait to see what evidence is in the report and how does it come out. All right, Ari, thank you, and have, have you, a good Lester. broadcast. Uh, Kelly O'Donnell remains in Florida with the president, who is at his Mar-a-Lago, Florida estate, and you're hearing more reaction, Kelly. 
Well, from the top Republican in Congress, Mitch McConnell, who is at times a outspoken ally of the president and times a more muted one, McConnell putting out a statement saying that he welcomes the news that the attorney general has received the report from uh, the special counsel. But particularly notable, he says many Republicans have long believed that Russia poses a significant threat to American interests. I hope the special counsel's report will help inform and improve our our efforts to protect our democracy. Think of that in contrast to the president often talking about a hoax or a witch hunt. Here you have the top Republican in the Senate affirming the idea that American democracy is under threat or attack from Russia by name. The, uh, the, uh, the Mitch McConnell also goes on to say that he is hopeful, much like Democrats are, of a speedy and transparent release of the report in whatever form is possible. So you may have a rare moment of some unity coming from Democrats and Republicans who now say, as the nation exhales after this very long process, what part can be made known? Can all of it be made known? All to be determined. But what is notable is the top Republican is not saying, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mueller. Uh, let's close the file. He's also speaking for more transparency. Yeah, Lester? notable that uh, all the responses on both sides of the aisle have been measured, but also notable to uh, talk about the fact that we don't know anything of what's in this document. Uh, Kelly O'Donnell, thank you. Jeremy Bash is a veteran of the Obama administration and a national security analyst for NBC News. And Jeremy, this ultimately was about Russian meddling in the American election. Have we moved a step closer to dealing with this threat through this special counsel investigation? Well, Lester, I think we need to think about this in two phases. Phase one was the special counsel's investigation. Phase two is really going to be a congressional investigation into what leverage does an adversary nation, the Russian Federation, have over our president, over the presidency, and ultimately over American foreign policy. Because from the lens of the national interest, that's the most important question. Yes, it's important to know who broke the law and who might go to prison. But fundamentally, at the end of the day, what I think Congress and the American people are going to be focused on with respect to Donald Trump is, can we trust him? Can we trust him to lead the country in a crisis? Can we trust him to look out for the best interests of the United States? And that's a question I think only Congress can answer through this phase two of the investigation. All right, Jeremy Bash, good to have you along as well. Thank you. So Robert Mueller's nearly two-year investigation is now complete. His report has been submitted to the Attorney General, and the next chapter of this extraordinary story now begins. What will we learn and when regarding Mueller's findings and what direction the many other investigations will take remains to be seen. We'll, of course, continue to follow all this closely. A lot of moving parts here. We'll be talking about them when I see you shortly on NBC Nightly News. And, of course, you can always follow on the NBC News app. For now, I'm Lester Holt, NBC News, New York. Good day. Special counsel in front of you, do you, do you think Rob, Bob, Robert Mueller should be the one to verbally tell you about his findings? I think it would be very useful to the American people if Mr. Mueller came before the committee and walked through the report and gave context to the factual findings that he made and the evidence he collected. Obviously, that would be limited by what uh, to protecting sources and methods and things that was classified. But I think he can tell the story of what he discovered in this very uh, exhaustive investigation of two years, uh, which led to many indictments, many convictions. Uh, the American people have a right to know exactly what happened, what the Russians did, who helped them, uh, who tried to obstruct justice. And I think walking through the report and sharing that with the American people yeah. would be incredibly valuable. I'm well aware you guys can walk and chew gum at the same time, or at least Congress will claim they can walk and chew gum at the same time, actually. I'm, I, I will let the American public determine whether you guys can actually do that. But let me ask you this. Now that you have the Mueller report, should your focus be on the Mueller report, or should you also be doing all these other things? And politically, do you at all worry about creating more fog for the American public that they actually stop paying attention to what you're doing? No, look, we have a responsibility to do both things. I think we've proven in the majority that we can. We passed H.R. 1, transformative legislation to reform our democracy, to raise ethical standards and reduce the influence of money in our political system. We've begun hearings on legislation to drive down prescription drug prices. We passed uh, universal background checks. Uh, we are working on an infrastructure bill. So, look, we've proven we're getting the work done for the American people. But right. at the same time, they elected us to hold this administration 
administration accountable, to do oversight, to be sure that we're performing our constitution, uh, re uh, constitutional responsibilities. And we have to do both, but the American people need to know the facts. They need to know what this administration is up to, and they need to have confidence that the checks and balances are working and that we're doing our job doing oversight. So we've got to do both things, and we've proven we can do it. David Cicilline, Democrat from uh, Rhode Island. Uh, on the Judici uh, Judiciary Committee, I imagine we're going to be seeing and hearing a lot from you as we keep going. Thank you very much. I, I want to bring Thank in you. Sam Nunberg, uh, who is with us. He is the only person with us that has been in front of the grand jury of the special counsel. So, Sam, um, how much faith, as somebody who participated in this process, and I say I use that word however you want to choose, I, I know it's not something you look forward to. Mm -hmm. um, how confident are you that this, uh, in, in, in the findings that Robert Mueller has? You, you seemed, I, before to express uh, how impressed you were with how much they knew. Well, I'm highly confident that they're ultimately going to find out whether or not the president uh, or the campaign, or if so, how much colluded on uh, the release of the WikiLeaks. You know, Chuck, the answer we don't have yet is who were these people that uh, were talking to Roger Stone and whether or not the president um, directed anyone at the campaign to uh, try to coordinate any release of the WikiLeaks. Uh, with that said, I'm also wondering if we're going to see uh, any more information about uh, anything doing with the, with the transition. That was something that was brought up to me numerous times in my voluntary interview. By the special counsel? Yes, by the special counsel. And he has never had one public indictment having to do with the transition or the inaugural committee, correct? No, he has not. It, these mm -hmm. indictments have essentially stopped. If you look at the three indict, you look at three right. indictments, right? You had the you had the private Russians, and you had the right. GRU, and then you had Roger, and these indictments have stopped there. So it'll be interesting to see. And everybody from uh, Trump allies, we've uh, mm -hmm. said, I don't know if I'm necessarily one, but we've all said that we wanted transparency and to see this full report. And what I'm interested to see is whether right. the president, Chuck, will stick to that. I think that's a fair point. I got Mitch McConnell's statement here, guys. Here's what he says. I'm grateful we have an experienced and capable attorney general to place to review the special counsel's report. Attorney General Barr now needs this time to do that. But then he adds this. The attorney general has said he intends to provide as much information as possible. As I have said previously, I sincerely hope he will do so as soon as he can and with as much openness and transparency as possible. At least it's bipartisan, the calls, or at least well, you can say it's the calls, and yes, you can read into that what you might want to read into that. It's Nicole. the hedge, though, right? It's a little so, bit of a hedge. So, so because Trump has, has, has taken a, a nihilistic strategy toward the integrity and reputation of a decorated Vietnam War hero, Robert Mueller, it's, you know, the adult in the party, I guess, Mitch McConnell saying, hey, in case it's not so bad for Trump, let's take a peek at it. It's pathetic, but that, I mean, that's where the Republican Party is today. Joyce Vance is also with us, uh, former U.S. attorney. Um, it's here, and yet we know nothing. Um, you know at least a little something about how these processes work. What help the viewers at least with the anticipation or frustration? Well, I think we're all Jon Snow tonight, right? We all know nothing at this point. Um, and it'll stay that way for a little while. Something that's important in Attorney General Barr's letter is that he commits early on to transparency. That's good. And he leads off in his first paragraph by telling us that there were no requests made by the special counsel that either he or Rod Rosenstein denied. That means they didn't ask to indict someone and, and get turned down. That means that they didn't ask to subpoena the president and receive a response saying that they couldn't do it. So that's a good starting point. But here's the problem. A decision by prosecutors not to indict people isn't a very telling decision. It might mean that no crime was committed. Mm -hmm. It might mean that they didn't have sufficient admissible evidence of guilt. So there's a lot of uh, room to run here. We'll need to see conclusions that Mueller reached right. and decisions that he reached, and we don't know what and if detail we'll, we'll learn. Let me introduce one of those things. Paul Manafort cooperated but then didn't cooperate, right? Rescinded his cooperation. It's very possible he could have provided information that would have helped with an indictment but without his cooperation, they don't have enough. Is that an example of something that you're like, boy, there's a ton of circumstantial, but they were missing the one piece and he backed out? 
That sometimes happens, especially in a public corruption case. Sometimes prosecutors will hit the wall. They suspect something happened, but prosecutors aren't in the business of indicting people based on suspicion. They only indict good prosecutors when they have proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Sometimes if you can't get someone on the inside to cooperate, you hit the wall. Other times, though, you find out that people that you've been investigating are in fact innocent. Let me go over to Casey Hunt. It's a weird day on Capitol Hill. It's very busy with reporters and staff, but not members. And in fact, it's so busy, not busy in Capitol Hill, she's in Manchester, New Hampshire. Um, because that's where half of the U.S. Senate is these days. Casey, obviously, you've Team got plenty of sources. You've got technology. What are you hearing from members of Congress you've been checking in with? Well, Chuck, obviously everybody is is waiting to figure out a little bit more about what is in this report. And right now it's really all hinging on that commitment in that letter for transparency. The attorney general, you know, walking through and saying, OK, you know, there were no instances uh, where I interfered. You know, I've got to go through all of this. And, you know, hopefully that will be my end goal. And I'll see what I can give to Congress and the public. Because, Chuck, as you know, that's where this fight is going to start to play out. Out if, in fact, what Barr is able to provide to Congress comes across as being uh, a less than complete right. accounting of this investigation. Now, clearly, we know that there are, as, as uh, Joyce Vance and others have been talking about, there are other cases that are proceeding in the Southern District of New York, sure. perhaps elsewhere, uh, that, you know, Department of Justice policy would normally have uh, redacted or prevented from being made public. So uh, I do think it's going to be a delicate balance there. Uh, uh, you know, we have Lindsey Graham, of course, uh, already tweeting uh, that, the, you know, he has been notified and he, you know, points to this transparency thing specifically. So, uh, you know, I know that that's where Democrats have been focused all the way in the lead up to it. And, you know, my sense has really been that the Department of Justice seems to recognize that not making so, at least some effort at, at transparency would be a real political right. problem for them. I mean, to even have the president the other day coming out and saying, you know, I yeah. want people to be able to to see this. I mean, if it's hidden, you know, people can really project whatever they want onto it. Yep. So uh, I think that's kind of where you should look to turn next. And, you know, frankly, it could be a very busy weekend. Right. I mean, Barr has said he may start talking to congressional leaders as soon as the next couple of days. Casey, what's sad is I think I know exactly where your stand-up is right now, and I know exactly what street corner you're on. Um, I, I think we, we know it so it's well. It's the Palace Theater, Chuck. I've been exactly. here like seven times. I know. We all know it so well, and we're going to know it really well. Oh, in about a week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, i got to go to Tom Winter. We do have a little breaking news. Thank you, Casey. So, Tom Winter. Indictment breaking news. What do you got? Yeah, and that's the breaking news, Chuck, that there will be no more indictments. A senior U.S. law enforcement mm -hmm. official uh, confirming what we were reporting, what Pete reported earlier, and as I mentioned to you a few moments ago, that per federal regulations, the moment that Special Counsel Robert Mueller transmitted this report, that absolutely concluded the investigation. And based on the information that we have in our sourcing and our reporting, that's it. Uh, there's no further indictments that will be offered up by the special counsel's office. Obviously, as you've been talking about here, right. Chuck, it, it is possible that uh, uh, that information derived during the course of their investigation, and we saw from the Michael Cohen search warrants this week, that information that Mueller may have uh, come upon or evidence that they may have developed could be used by other U.S. attorney's offices in other parts of the country uh, to eventually lead to cases uh, right now. That's it. Uh, special counsel Robert Mueller's office is done as of today. With the exception of obviously the cases that they've uh, that they've brought, there'll be U.S. attorneys that'll work on that case. Think of the Roger Stone trial, for example. Uh, and obviously, it's not like they just turn off the lights and Roger Stone's free to go. No, uh, those cases will all be prosecuted, and the normal court work will continue. But uh, there's no uh, big kind of uh, elephant in the closet, so to speak, that's about to uh, well, come walking out. All right, that is an important. There was a lot of speculation in the air on that. An important moment there, Tom Winter. Thank you. And control room, I was trying to send you some singles. The president today, Nicole, today went after Bob Mueller again. That's the point. And, and so, you know, while it's nice that his wingmen in Congress are trying to say, let's wait and see what we've got, we should look at it first. That, 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 that. that fight has been fought. Donald Trump has been smearing 
Bob Mueller, who is the only FBI director in American history to have had his 10-year term extended, not by the Republican president who appointed him, but by his Democratic successor. Bob deep Mueller, state. yeah. And, and the deep state conspiracy goes like this. Republicans, <laughs> right. Bob Mueller, Republican Jim yeah. Comey, Republican Andy Cave found a treehouse and hatched a plot. It's ludicrous. It is. But that's where the we Trump have the message Trump. is. Here's what the president said in an interview uh, on Fox Business today. A deputy that didn't get any votes appoints a man that didn't get any votes. He's going to write a report on me. I had one of the greatest election victories in history. But think of it. I have a deputy appoints a man to write a report on me to make a determination on my presidency. People will not stand for it. <laughs> People will not stand for it. Heidi. To your point, Chuck, what have we seen throughout this entire episode? We've seen the only consistency here is the, this president just bludgeoning Robert Mueller. This president and everyone around him telling lies, lies that we've proven in real time, lies that have proven to be lies as a result of these prosecutions. So we need, as the American people, as the media, as Congress, in whatever form it comes out that is legal and in accordance with U.S. laws, an answer as to why the lying and why the attacks. And there are two plausible lines here. One is that there was a financial interest here. There was a financial stake with the Trump Tower and that the president never expected to be elected and that he was teeing things up for himself to have a big payday in Moscow. The second one is that there was an actual conspiracy, that there's an explanation for why the Russians knew to micro-target, for instance, people in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, African-American voters on criminal justice reform in Florida. I mean, Heidi's, Heidi has blessfully brought us back to the substance of this. At, at, at its core, Andy McCabe said this on his book tour, there was an open question about three things. One, whether the president was actually working for Russia. Two, whether he, like Mike Flynn, was a potential target for blackmail. And three, you know, w w whether the counterintelligence investigation being full was, was going to yield these answers. You know, the, the one other thing about this, uh, John, is do you think, how do we put this toothpaste back in the tube? Yeah. This is long-term damage. I mean, beyond long-term damage. There is 40% of the country the president has spun up believing that the rule of law in this country uh, and, and frankly, then you're going to have 40% on the other side if the president does sort of banana republic us in this. This is, I don't know how we put the toothpaste back in there. Well, we're going through some very choppy and stormy waters, uh, clearly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like to think that the strength of our institutions, as we're now seeing with the Department of Justice, uh, is going to prevail. I'd like to think that our electoral system is going to get us on the right path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but clearly, we are in a very, very difficult time right now. But I have, I'm optimistic. I'm hopeful that we're going to emerge from this stronger. Dan Balls, today's action by the president, that basically a dictator can say nice things about him and they can get their way, right? He yanks sanctions away because according to the spokesperson for the president of the United States of America, he likes them. So in weird way, the Mueller report, which is about how much all this influence, it's painfully obvious how easy it is totally. to influence him. Totally. I mean, and we have seen this repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly, but, but at this moment, there is a tremendous amount of responsibility that is now on the shoulders of the Democrats in the House and the leadership as to what they are going to do and how they are going to handle this and how they are going to handle it intelligently and with a way that will give confidence to the American people. And then, as John says, there is an electoral process underway. Those two may, you know, they may run right into one another because this is going to go on for a while. But those are the two moments, those are the two yeah. places where this will get not resolved yeah. but adjudicated. Let me bring in Ben Wittes. He thinks about these things a lot, <laughs> uh, the editor-in-chief of Lawfare blog. So, Ben, how do you hope Congress handles this? Well, the first question is, what is it they are supposed to handle, right? And mm -hmm. that, of mm -hmm. course, goes to the issue you guys have been discussing for the last hour, which is what's in the report. The initial question for Congress is, pursuant to Congress's and the House of Representatives' authority and responsibility to determine whether the president should be impeached, is there any evidence in here that would constitute grounds for impeachment? The second issue... Uh, assuming the answer to that is no. The second question would be, is there remedial legislation that you would need to address some of the issues that the special counsel did find? 
And then the third issue is simply a one of one of public exposure and accountability. Assuming there's no legislation that you're not going to impeach anybody, voters still have a right to know what happened to answer the questions for themselves before they decide whether to reelect this person. You know, I've had this theory that if um, Madison were alive and he were told, OK, the impeachment process, there's a the, the voters have one more say. Um, or you wait to the second term. I mean, if you look at our last two impeachments in, in my lifetime, or threatened impeachments, both were second term ones. Mm -hmm. Is it possible Madison, and I, we're all just, he's, we can't <laughs> check with him, but he might have said, well, the election is the one way, is the first way to resolve this, and then we'll think about um, impeachment. So that is certainly correct, but he would also say he would be appalled that well, Congress yes. had waited <laughs> for the executive branch to conduct this investigation yes. of itself. Mm -hmm. And he would say, you are a coordinate branch of government. Make your own decisions about what happened. Make your, do your own investigation mm -hmm. and come to your mm -hmm. own judgment under your own oath of, oaths of office about right. whether the president is fit to be in office. Dan Balls, this is going to be a You know, it's interesting whose decision this is going to be. Is it Nancy Pelosi's? Or is it Beto, Bernie, Kamala? You know, is it the presidential campaign that will determine how aggressively well, I mean, Democrats feel they need to go after Your people? question is really, is it the leadership or the base? Yeah. I mean, is it the leaders or the people who they are following? Right, and the presidential and, candidates and, we know are going to follow the base. Right. I yeah. mean, we 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 can see that already yeah. happening. That that the presidential candidates are going to be farther out on the edge on not just this, but all kinds of things sure. than the leadership will be. Um, and I don't know at this point whether that will be strong enough to force some action that. The leadership in Congress would otherwise be reluctant to take. But it depends on what's in the report. I mean, that's why Nancy Pelosi was downplaying this whole impeachment fear, because she wants to wait to see what's in the report. Right now, they know the history of impeachments and what's happened after impeachments that were not bipartisan, and that is you get spanked She's a vote the election. Counter. She's a vote counter, and she counts votes <clears throat> in the Senate, too. John Brennan, what do you think Madison would have asked, done? <laughs> he would have shook his head and then in shame. And said, no, you know what he would have yeah. said? I gave you the Electoral College for a reason. Why did you defang it? But sorry. <laughs> well, I think the point that Ben was making, which is the, the actual the, people, the Congress is a co-equal branch of government. And uh, unfortunately, it's been so rattled and undermined by the partisanship that is there, they've not been able to fulfill, I think, their constitutional responsibilities. And so I think to Heidi's point, it's what's in this report, whether it's going to meet that standard that Nancy Pelosi said needs to be compelling, overwhelming, and bipartisan. Mm -hmm. And I have not seen yet the Republicans rise to this occasion. Nicole, who are the Republican senators that you're really watching here that do you think are, will be the sense of the mainstream of well, look, the Republican the, the, Party. My response earlier about Republicans being checkmated has its roots in Pelosi's move. She said, no, no, no impeachment right. unless everyone agrees. And what, what the, the manner in which Republicans are in a box is they're going to have to decide if the crime of obstruction of justice and perhaps witness tampering and others if that's still illegal, if they still think it's a crime, there are hours of tape mm -hmm. of Lindsey Graham, Mitch McConnell, John Boehner calling obstruction of justice grounds for impeachment. <laughs> Do they still feel that way? Or has Donald Trump right. given them a, a sort of uh, taken away their conscience? Well, it's been a historic day. We've had deadline MTP. Thank but, you for keeping me. But guess what? <laughs> you and I have to stay. No. <laughs> We have, we have changed the name in his deadline MTP beat. Ari Melber. You actually thought you were leaving. Live baton. I just yeah. gave Nicole the good news that she doesn't get to leave no, either. My earpiece was Ari, broken. Ari, we'll be relying on both of you, uh, Chuck but and we're Nicole. we're staying for you if you need us. Thank you. Stay with me for this breaking news. Special counsel Bob Mueller has finished his Russia investigation late today. He filed his formal report with the Justice Department, which announced this news at 5 p.m. Eastern on March 22nd, a day that history will mark as the end of a significant probe and the beginning of a pitched battle over who will see Bob Mueller's findings and what, if anything, to do about them. Here are the facts. Attorney General Bill Barr notifying Congress with this letter you see right here, brand new. It states that the DOJ never overruled Mueller on any big calls like who to indict, and states Barr may be in a position to advise Congress of Bob Mueller's principal conclusions about those indictments and who he did not indict as soon as this weekend. As soon as this weekend. So 
There is a lot to get to. I have a big panel and a lot of experts and Chuck and Nicole waiting. But I go first to a newsmaker. The intelligence chairman in the House, Adam Schiff, joins us by phone for his first reaction. Good evening, sir. I'm waiting to see if I can hear Chairman Schiff on the phone. Sorry, uh, I can hear you. Great. Uh, thank you. I hear you now, Chairman. Our, our viewers can hear you. Your reaction to tonight's news? Well, we've been waiting for that uh, puff of smoke above the Justice Department and finally got it today that the special counsel has concluded his investigation. Uh, the key question, though, is will Bill Barr live up to the commitment that he made to be as transparent as possible? which would require making public the Mueller report. Uh, we voted overwhelmingly uh, in the House to do that. Uh, but for Lindsey Graham's uh, stopping that bill in the Senate, I think the Senate would have voted overwhelmingly to make the Mueller report uh, public as well. Uh, but one thing I will add, Ari, is the report itself, as important as that will be, um, is not as important as the underlying evidence. Uh, and in particular, uh, of concern to us in the Intelligence Committee, any evidence of compromise, whether it was criminal or not. Any evidence that a U.S. person, the president, or anyone around him uh, may be acting uh, in the foreign interest of an adversary and not in the interest of our country. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, as you know, this, this letter was directed to Congress. You are uh, one of the decision makers reacting to it. And I understand you to be referring to the two pieces here. One, that by this weekend, uh, Bob, uh, Bill Barr says he could ref basically refer to you his view of Bob Mueller's principal conclusions. And that number two, he says in the time ahead, he will consult with Mueller and Rosenstein about what other information can be released to both you, the Congress, and the public. Um, now that we know that's the stance they take, uh, what is your view, Mr. Chairman, of what must be in that other second bucket of other information? So it's important for people to, to know that what Mueller is reporting, as best we can tell, are his conclusions uh, on the criminal uh, side of the House, uh, who should be indicted and who shouldn't be indicted and why he reached those conclusions. But let's remember this began as a counterintelligence investigation as to whether any U.S. persons were acting as agents of a foreign power. Um, and that information may be of the greatest consequence to the country because it would shed light on whether U.S. policy is being distorted for financial or other reasons. Uh, and that is the information that I think uh, absolutely must be shared with the Congress and ultimately made public. Uh, in fact, there is a statutory obligation to inform the intelligence committees of any significant intelligence activity, including counterintelligence. So we're fully going to expect that that's what the department is going to do, and if we need to compel them to do so, we will. But we need to know at the end of the day that the president is uh, acting out of the country's interest and not because he wants to build a tower in Moscow or for any other uh, blessed purpose. Uh, Chairman Adam Schiff has joined us here in our live coverage of the breaking news that the Mueller report has been filed 5 p.m. Eastern tonight and everyone making sense of what comes next. Uh, on that, Chairman, before I let you go, I also want to ask you, when you look at the record, now we can mark today as the end of Bob Mueller's actual investigation. Uh, you, Congress, and a lot of other people can react to what he found, but I want to go over with you before I let you go. What he's done now, 37 indictments, six former advisors uh, to Donald Trump, uh, many of them accused of things that relate to activities that were taken, they say, on behalf of Donald Trump, uh, his lawyer, campaign activities, national security, lying to the FBI. If this is the end, do you view tonight's news as an indication there are no other potentially sealed or remaining indictments that we would learn about? And what does it mean uh, in your view, that Bob Mueller has this record of 37 indictments and finished his probe today? Well, what it means is that uh, the Office of the Special Counsel, which is essentially a contract attorney to the Justice Department, that that office won't be bringing any further indictments. Uh, it doesn't mean, of course, that Maine Justice or the Southern District of New York U.S. Attorney's Office or the Eastern District or others uh, may not bring uh, indictments. In fact, Given the lengthy redactions in many of the pleadings of the special counsel alluding to other investigations, I think it's entirely possible, if not likely, that there will be other indictments. Now, how central or peripheral they'll be to the core issues of potential conspiracy uh, is yet to be determined. But 
in terms of the special counsel's record, I think it's one uh, that, uh, you know, by historic standards in terms of the swiftness of the conduct investigation, uh, the number of people uh, close to the president that were indicted and convicted, uh, the number of Russians indicted, the specificity of the information given about Russia's interference in our election, it's a signal accomplishment uh, for any team of prosecutors. Uh, Chairman Schiff, I trust you'll be busy, especially over this weekend, given that the attorney general says he may be briefing you and your colleagues as soon as this weekend. I, I thank you for calling in uh, to the beat tonight with your first reaction. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We have a lot of experts standing by, Nick Ackerman, Joyce Vance, Maya Wiley, many more. Uh, but as promised, I want to turn to two colleagues of mine who have been covering this story for its entire 22 months, NBC's Chuck Todd and Nicole Wallace, a part of our special continuing coverage of the Mueller Report. Chuck, what does tonight mean? Well, I think it's the beginning of a new political battle, uh, and it's going to be a, a beginning of a new legal battle, right? You're going to have a legal battle between, I think, Congress and the Justice Department a bit into what we see, how much we're going to see it. And that, of course, will be tinged with politics. But the larger political battle is going to be what to do about what's learned in it, right? We've still got to know what's in it. But, you know, if there's a, if there's a pretty solid obstruction case that gets laid out here, and Mueller, the only reason Mueller decided not to any not to to indict it is that he is Mr. By the book, right? And in, and the book said sitting president can't be indicted. Um, then this Congress is going to have some big decisions to make. The politics of this is going to be driven on the Democratic side, I think, more by the presidential candidates though uh, than than Congress. But we'll see on that. And then of course there's the president. I mean, look at his behavior this week. If this is any indication. Because he's been bracing for Mueller all week. The entire McCain episode was triggered by Mueller, right? He has been absolutely, you know, some people have questioned, obviously, George Conway questioned his stability. Sadly, I, I think he's very stable here. This is just a man who's manic and obsessed with one thing. Mm. Uh, and you saw it in this, in this irrationality about McCain. And it is all driven by Mueller. And so he is a wild card here that could set fire anywhere. Nicole? Listen, a lot of the folks I talk to in the national security and former intelligence community um, say this is this is the beginning of the beginning of a brand new phase. The the counterintelligence investigation that Andy McCabe opened into Donald Trump after the firing of Jim Comey, um, w w w w that was a, that's a recent revelation in terms of information in the public sphere. We didn't know that all along Mueller had inherited a counterintelligence investigation to answer this question. Is Donald Trump working for Russia? When we talk about the politics, I I'm sure Chuck is right about it, but that's based on what we know now. I think the earth could change under our feet, and a counterintelligence investigation of anyone doesn't end in an indictment. So I know there's a lot of coverage tonight about indictments. Mueller, Mueller didn't have any more indictments. I think, I think our network, our news organization, has known that for a little bit. But the counterintelligence investigation is more than a flashing yellow light for this administration and this Congress. And to say we know what the politics are right now is, is, is ludicrous. Until we know how those questions were answered, Bob Mueller had access to not just all intercept intelligence from U.S. intelligence agencies, but he had access to Five Eyes Intel. He saw everything everybody heard. And, and you have to go back to the summer of, of 2016 to, to sort of remember just how alarmed the intelligence community was, not just about Russian meddling, but about this bizarre intersection between the Trump campaign and Russian meddling. Those are questions that, that, that someone is going to need to know the answers to before we turn the page on the Mueller chapter. Well, and that goes to what we may find out about this weekend. It is extraordinary to have the sitting at attorney general say, I got it, I got the football, and I right. might be passing off details <laughs> of it by this weekend. Uh, yeah. That's weekend work for, uh, for the Justice Department and the members of Congress who are eager. Uh, Mr. Barr would have well been within his rights to say, by next Friday. He didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, um, but don't you forget, it. Go there's, ahead, caveat, there's caveats in that letter. He may simply say, here were the, here were the decisions. Here were the he, but he may not give the reasons for them, right? He may just say he declined to do this, but right. not give the reason. Right, and that's, yeah. that language principle conclusions will be very interesting. Right. Chuck and Nicole, thanks for staying over with me, and I know you both are, are going to be doing a lot of work. We're going to be seeing a lot of you. I bring in now former acting solicitor general Neil Kotchell. He wrote 
the rules governing this special counsel probe. I can also mention tonight something we were going to mention on the beat soon, but he is a new NBC News and MSNBC legal analyst. Uh, congratulations, and we'll talk more about that on another night that's less busy. Um, let's start with the, the core question on the rules that you wrote. Uh, do you see the letter that Mr. Barr has just submitted to Congress as the right and proper first step under your written rules? Absolutely. It's the right first step. I think what happened today is a chapter, an important chapter, has concluded the Mueller investigation. Um, but it is only the end of the chapter. And now there are further chapters to be written. One is, what does this report actually say? And is Congress going to see it in the American public? Because we generally don't have secret books in this country, um, particularly when we're dealing with the president. And another is, is this the only book? Is this the Mueller report going to be comprehensive? Is it going to cover the Southern District investigation about campaign finance, all these other things about the Trump Foundation, or is it limited just to obstruction of justice and Russian conspiracy? Let me read to you from the letter again, which is going to be a very important template for everything that comes next. Uh, Mr. Barr went beyond just this weekend part that I said. That's about conclusions. Then he talks about this wider set of information, what I think a lot of people think of when they think of the so-called Mueller report. And he says, I intend to consult with Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein and Special Counsel Mueller to determine what other information from the report can be released to Congress and the public. Neil, how do you interpret that reference, which is not necessarily required, uh, as Barr suggesting that perhaps he seems to think he'll have their agreement uh, in the transparency that he ultimately does or does not apply to what Mueller found. Right. I think Attorney General Barr has been sounding exactly the right note, which is a belief in transparency, a belief that the American public should see this report, because after all, it is one of the most momentous documents, you know, ever produced by any federal official ever. So I think all of that's right. And I think, Ari, you're also right to say the special counsel regulations don't necessarily require themselves the report to be public, but they don't forbid it either. And there's a long tradition and a need for transparency when you're dealing with something like this, which is, you know, allegations of high level serious wrongdoing by our nation's most important official. Uh, so that's on the rules. I want to keep you in your other role as a former senior Justice Department official uh, beyond being uh, a rules expert if you'll if you'll join our prosecutor panel which is what we turn to now in our special coverage Neil Katyal stays and I'm joined by former federal prosecutors Joyce Vance a U.S. attorney and Nick Ackerman a former Watergate special prosecutor and John Flannery a former federal prosecutor with expertise in congressional investigations everyone is here Neil is here as well starting with you Nick that's on the rules and what we're going to learn Right. What does it mean to you that Bob Mueller finished work tonight? He did not end with a bang of new public indictments. Uh, and it would seem, unless we get something else unsealed, that this investigation ends with the 37. Well, we don't know that. If you read the literal language in that letter, he's explaining the decisions to prosecute and the declinations he has reached. Does that mean he is asking Barr for permission to file other indictments? I don't know. But it certainly leaves that open. Well, he suggests that under the rules he must state if they ever disagreed on that, and he says they never did. And, and now Bob Mueller tonight is done with this job. Right. But if you read that language, it says it explains the decisions he has reached on prosecutions and declinations. We don't know what he's reached on declinations. I don't even know if the attorney general knows that. But when he uses the tense has reached, does that mean he has reached certain decisions on indicting individuals and he's asking for permission from the department to do that? But we are in a new phase after all of the waiting and speculation. Joyce, tonight we can say Bob Mueller finished this job. He finished the probe. He indicted 37 people or organizations, uh, six former advisors to Donald Trump, the fastest and highest indictment rate of any president ever in American history. What do you make of what we now know tonight? I think we've learned some things. We have others still to learn. Mueller has clearly made a decision that he is done indicting for his core mission, which was Russian collusion during the election with members of the Trump campaign. We've seen no more 
indictments in that regard. I think it's unlikely that we will. But that still leaves open an enormous range of investigations that we know are underway. And the interesting point here is that Mueller, who was so vilified by the president, was not someone who conducted a witch hunt. He stuck to his remit, to his jurisdiction, and was parceling cases out that were related to financial fraud, non-Russian cases, to Southern District of New York. We understand a couple of divisions in Maine Justice, National Security Division and the Criminal Division have cases. And obviously, we've seen a flurry of investigations at state AG's offices. So perhaps good news for the president tonight in that there's no indictment of him personally, bad news in the sense that there's still ongoing investigation of other conduct. John Flannery, your view? Uh, I may be the discordant voice of the people talking about this uh, development, but I think that process is outcome determinative. And we were put on notice that Trump was upset with Sessions because he wouldn't kill the investigation. And now we're asked to credit the conduct of Barr to proceed properly. My concern is as a former prosecutor and looking at Mueller, who's done so well up to this point, is whether or not there was pressure to close this thing down. And I think we would be remiss if we didn't have uh, Mueller up on the Hill talking about what he did and why there was no more in the investigation. Well, let's speak uh, to I, that, John. Uh, yeah. you're, you're saying something that uh, Congressman Schiff did not yet say. We got his first reaction on the right. intelligence side. The judiciary will, will have time to review all this. <laughs> Uh, it seems that, John, you know a lot about the congressional side of this. It seems they're keeping their powder dry to see whether Barr does what he says he's going to do. Well, I think what Barr is going to do is give anorexic uh, disclosures uh, that are probably limited, perhaps the topic sentences of those we may indict, maybe that's zero, declinations we might not be told about. And that's what makes me think that the second part of that note is I'm going to go back and I'm going to ask Mueller and I'm going to ask Rosenstein what else we should talk about. That makes me think more strongly that the first disclosure over this weekend is going to be pretty thin stuff. And mm. I could be wrong, but I'm looking at the character or lack of character of Barr and how he was chosen and what he said on the Hill and how he was going to rigidly follow what protocols were on the Hill, probably including the Lindner letter, which goes back some time, which talks about non-disclosure of investigations, a very strong statement. And uh, we'll find that out in the days ahead. But before we celebrate and sing Kumbaya that finally we have a report that we think might be 400 pages that tells us everything, I think we should just pump the brakes twice because I don't think this Justice Department, I don't think this president, I don't think Giuliani or any of these people would let that happen. Um, I don't know about that. I mean, I, th I think <laughs> I, Bob Mueller is the kind of guy who's going to put what he wants to put in that report. He's going to put in exactly what he found, what he intends to do or not do, why he prosecuted certain individuals and didn't. I mean, there are no there's no question about it. there are open issues right now that we do not have information about. Well, that, and, and John, John is saying let's not just sing kumbaya. And, and as lawyers and journalists, we don't tend to do that. We tend to look at evidence right. and, and be skeptical, appropriately so. Um, on the flip side, I do think, uh, Neil, that, that Mr. Barr is trying, at least in his public messaging here, to say that Bob Mueller's in on it. And forget kumbaya, but Bob Mueller is not exactly a shrinking uh, wallflower when it comes to making sure that the integrity and the findings are handled in what he views as the right way. Uh, so, Neil, with that in mind and the, and the bear hug that has been issued tonight by, by Barr around Mueller saying, hey, I'm keeping him in. He's done with his pro, but he's going to be involved. Uh, and then let's look at what Barr said under oath about all this. Take a look. I am going to make as much information available as I can, consistent with the rules and regulations that are part of the special counsel regulations. So, Neil, how does he do that? And what happens if later Mueller wants more out than he does? Would we learn about that? Could, could Mueller then testify? I think it's possible for Mueller to testify. I think the first thing to note, though, for why I think John might be wrong about this is Barr's letter today says something significant. It says that I, as attorney general, and all my predecessors as acting attorneys general didn't overrule Mueller on anything. So we're learning something very important that's required by the regulations that he's to make that certification or to say if there had been overrulings. So, you know, I'm not one who's normally praising uh, this Justice Department. 
uh, but it does look like, uh, at least according to that statement, there was no interference by any yeah. attorney general let's, Neil, in let's, the investigation. Let's build on that point, and you know, I'm going to try to do it in plain English. If you <laughs> believe the reporting, Donald Trump repeatedly, clumsily tried in various ways to interfere and tried to shut down stuff in New York and tried, according to the New York Times, to ask other people to basically constrain or remove Bob Mueller himself. And what we see tonight, I, th I think it's worth basically taking this in for your analysis, Neil. What we see tonight is that part of the system seems to have beat back and defeated Donald Trump's attempts. Uh, his own White House counsel reportedly going to Bob Mueller and saying, listen, he's asked me to try to break the law and get you fired. I'm not going to do it. Now, what does America do about that? You, you walk us through it, but isn't that a good piece of news tonight that this, this so probe it, finished? It is, a good, it is a good piece of news, Ari, but there's one important caveat. I don't think that the letter today deals with the Southern District of New York investigation sure. but at what all. about the firing? And so it could be that Trump the, has interfered. Sure, and I'm not, I'm not giving anyone a clean bill of health. I'm referring right. to attempted interference, but before we get ahead, sometimes we jump on, even the, the Chairman Schiff, as is his right, was telling us about all the other things, but tonight is the Mueller report. What does it tell you that after 22 months, Bob Mueller stayed on the job and finished when he chose to, not at Donald Trump's insistence that he leave mm -hmm. earlier? Right. Nobody who knows Mueller is surprised by that. I mean, you know, Mueller was going to do his job um, until he got removed from office or something like that. Um, and the good news is the system held. That didn't happen. My important point to, to you and the viewers mm -hmm. is it just everyone should understand this is just about a limited, the Mueller investigation. And as Joyce said, there are a whole bunch of other investigations, including most prominently the Southern District one. Absolutely, and I think that's very well put, and I think we understand that. I'm in a moment going to bring in uh, Senator Richard Blumenthal from the Judiciary Committee, but uh, since you were mentioned, Joyce, uh, your view of, of that point, and what do Americans take from this? Some of us follow this very closely. But some people don't. They keep hearing, hey, it might come out, and they say, tell me when it does. Well, America, it just came out, and Bob Mueller finished the job and had a high indictment rate. What, what do you make of that part of this? You know, it did come out, and Bob Mueller certainly diagnosed a problem that took place with our elections. The Russians tried to influence it. They tried to troll us online. They hacked emails. They did everything that they could to help this president. So Mueller's done a remarkable job in that way. I really agree with Neil that we need to give Bill Barr the opportunity here to do what he commits to doing in this letter, to being transparent. As a prosecutor, when I declined on a case, I had a form in my office that we had to fill out. And when you decided not to prosecute somebody you'd been investigating, you had to say why. Mm -hmm. It might be no federal offense evident. In other words, you think that there was no crime that was committed. It might be weak or insufficient evidence. We think there was a crime, but we don't have proof beyond a reasonable How doubt. How many people do you think are on that list? You know, in this probe. we don't know, but the most interesting thing, Ari, is that the key question here that Bill Barr has to answer is why didn't Bob Mueller take action against the president? Mm -hmm. It could be one of those. It could be that he complied with DOJ's policy against mm -hmm. indicting a sitting president. Which goes towards transparency. If the only Absolutely. reason you didn't do it was that policy, then Congress is the, is the other check. Do you want to give a number before I bring in the senator? Uh, a number of how, how many, many people, people do you declined? think they declined to charge? Uh, that's really, I, uh, I'd be such speculation at this point. I mean, I get engaged in speculation, but I can't really do it based Fair. on what we know. Fair. I really can't. We ask the I questions mean, and we respect if you don't have the answer. But, you stay with me. I'm going to bring in uh, Senator Richard Blumenthal from the Judiciary Committee and we should mention a former federal prosecutor. Thanks for joining me tonight, Senator. Thank you. What does this mean that Mueller is finished, that he's filed his report, and that, uh, that Bob Barr's filed this letter? It concludes a very productive and effective investigation that requires now absolute and complete transparency. That has been one of the themes of the day for exactly the reasons that you just articulated. The facts and evidence here are likely to show a lot of criminality. A lot of wrongdoing and lawbreaking that is not indicted here. Let me make sure Whether I understand, because, because for folks joining us on this big night, Bob Mueller does this for 22 months. He indicts 37 people and organizations. You're saying that's a floor, not a ceiling. It's a floor in terms of proof beyond a reasonable doubt and the Department of Justice policy. It's only a policy. It's not a rule or regulation. 
that a sitting president cannot be indicted. So uh, there are obviously other investigations that have been spawned and spun off by the facts and evidence that Bob Mueller has found in the Southern District of New York. I think there's a high likelihood that there are indictments in this president's future because I'm gonna, of the I'm gonna ongoing push you, investigation Senator, there. I'm going to push you away from New York. We covered that story, and we'll keep covering it. But I'm going to stay on the Mueller report tonight and ask you something I haven't had a chance to ask uh, anyone in Congress yet. Do you view this ending of the Mueller report in this way tonight as an indication that Bob Mueller did not find chargeable collusion or election conspiracy by Americans. I think there's no basis to draw that conclusion right now. We can draw that conclusion only, and I stress only, if William Barr exercises his discretion to disclose the facts and evidence. He has near complete discretion. I asked him in his confirmation proceeding whether he would commit to full disclosure. He failed to do so. He declined. That was one of the reasons, perhaps the main reason, I voted against his confirmation. So are you saying and tonight, this is, need... this is the debate we've, we're all getting to, you're saying if the White House implies that this could be good news, uh, or if people at DOJ start coming out and saying, well, here's the little bit we've put out, and obviously there's no collusion indictment, so that part is over, you're saying if that were true, if that were such good news, they must release the rest of it, and people can draw their own conclusions. The White House ought to support full transparency. The president said he backs it. And if he really is in favor of full transparency, he'll back the bill that I've introduced with Senator Grassley. It's a bipartisan bill that would establish as a matter of law that there should be full transparency, full disclosure. The American people paid for this report. They deserve to know True. what's in it. And the public has a right to know. So if uh, the folks who are saying, oh, well, we have no objection to all the facts and evidence coming out are really serious and sincere. They'll back the bill that Senator Chuck Grassley, a Republican of Iowa, and I have introduced with growing support, including most recently John Kennedy of Louisiana mm -hmm. and Patrick Leahy of Vermont. Hey, Senator, I want to push you on, on something else, uh, and I want to bring in Neil Kotchels into this part as well. We are seeing indications that this is the end. Bob Mueller's done. Uh, and obviously, if he's done, they're not going to file any future charges within this probe. Bob Mueller's done tonight. Does that mean, in your view, that there are no possible sealed indictments left, or do we not know that yet? I think there is a strong possibility of additional indictments, including President Trump's family. Maybe not by the Department of Justice, Maine Justice. But by other offices, I know that you want to stick to the Mueller report. But the Mueller report cannot be viewed in isolation any more than an investigation, even though it may end, cannot lead to additional investigative leads and actions. And so I think there's a high probability mm. of additional indictments. I, I put that topic uh, to Neil Kotchel for his analysis. And if you have a question for the senator uh, on this Newsy night, I, I'm curious what you want to know from this member of the Judiciary Committee. Well, I agree with you that I think that there could be the possibility of sealed indictments. I think it's a tough one, though. Uh, you know, I would have expected that to have come and come out by now, mm -hmm. um, just in the, since the report's been transmitted for over an hour. My gut is that's not likely. There are, as the senator said, could be indictments in other investigations, the Southern District investigation and others. I guess for Senator Blumenthal, I think the most important question I have is, you know, if the president asserts executive privilege in some way, mm. uh, what is the committee? Be prepared to do about that? Key question. First, and I hope you agree with me, there, no, there is no executive privilege as to evidence of criminality. In other words, the President of the United States can't invoke executive privilege, nor can anyone on his behalf, in effect, to cover up. Indeed, I think there's no right in and proper review on the part of the White House of any of the facts and evidence. It's for the ju Justice Department to review. I think the remedy from Congress will be to subpoena the facts and evidence, the body of documents and interviews and even grand jury material. The judge has the right and, in my view, the responsibility here to waive the 6E 
protection that normally applies, because I think there is such an overwhelming public interest in as much transparency as possible. So the use of subpoenas, let's pause, the legislation let's that I've offered, the, and so forth. Let's pause on the point you're making so you could build on it, Senator. You're referring to the fact that in normal cases, anything that goes before that super secret grand jury stays secret. Um, but this is, I don't think anyone would debate this honestly at this point. This is not a normal case. This was an investigation into foreign interference that's been proven, whether Americans who actively talked about wanting it and benefiting from it also rose to the level of criminally organizing it, uh, and what that means, given that some of those people are in power, running the government, overseeing the intelligence agencies, uh, and some of them are headed to prison. Uh, some of them with relationships good, good and point. debt. So with all of that, walk us through what you mean uh, when, you, when you refer to 6E, which, of course, we, we love the details. You're referring to the idea that this time is one of the best public interest arguments for releasing that. The argument for releasing this information, redacting the classified information, irrelevant private information like addresses and social security number, or information that is important to an ongoing investigation, but the judge who's in charge of this grand jury, remember, grand jury is an arm of the court, appointed by the court, mm -hmm. to do the court's work. And the judge has the power to waive 6E in a case exactly like this one, where a special prosecutor or a special counsel has been appointed precisely because there has been a potential betrayal of public trust, a very unusual and special set of circumstances that justifies, in fact, the release of information that otherwise might not be by the Department of Justice, because there is a policy, and it's well justified, that derogatory or disparaging information about someone who has not been indicted should right. not be released. And I but, followed but, as a but, United States attorney, sometimes to my utter frustration, because I had a lot of information about bad people, but I couldn't talk about and it. And now you're going in down your, your memory lane as a prosecutor. What I'm going to do uh, here is keep, keep Neil, uh, who's going to add to that. Senator, I know that you learned about this from that letter that went to Congress at about 515. I really appreciate you as a member of the Judiciary Committee willing to come and give your first reaction on the beat. And I trust we'll be calling on you in the days ahead. Senator Richard Blumenthal, thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> really appreciate it. Neil stays with me. But I want to reset here as we're about half past the hour and tell you what's going on. Bob Mueller has been working for 22 months. He's indicted 37 people or organizations, and many were wondering when would he finish. Tonight, he finished. As I mentioned, reporters who've been tracking this case all over the, the Washington terrain, the Justice Department, the undisclosed location of the special counsel, and other places where there may have been clues, the photograph that went around of Bob Mueller arriving to work. Everyone has been wondering about this. I want to turn to one of our reporters now who was on this case from the start and who was part of the late day drama. NBC's Julia Ainsley is standing where she has been reporting all day from the DOJ headquarters in Washington. Uh, we've done a lot of the law and the implications. Why don't we start, Julia, in walking us through what happened late today as you started to get the clues that Bob Mueller was done? I would love to tell you about that, Ari, and we've got protesters behind us. That might even be the least stressful thing that's happened today is this drum you hear behind me. We have been on pins and needles down here really every day this week. Starting around maybe early Wednesday, we had a sense that the Justice Department was preparing for this report. And reporters across the city who cover the Justice Department, the White House and Congress all started to put our pieces together and realize something was coming soon. There was another change. There was a heightened intensity, you could say, starting this afternoon sometime after 3 o'clock. People started to get into place, hearing different rumors. One of the pieces was that some of Robert Mueller's prosecutors left for the day. They left that office early. So that, again, put our antenna up. We started to think maybe something was coming. And then uh, late in the day, closer to 5 o'clock, the Justice Department reporters got together in the hallway waiting for the key person who was going to give us this information to come out of a meeting presumably with the attorney general and others who were responsible for this report and for getting this information. We waited. They came. They gave us the information. I grabbed this letter and ran to the camera where we are now. Later, we went back just to fill in some of these details. And at that point, we heard from a senior Justice Department official that piece about how there are no further indictments 
in this report from Mueller at this time. So a lot of running around, a lot of intensity, also a lot of camaraderie. This, this is some of my favorite times in Washington, or some of the most competitive stories. You see reporters from different outlets who would usually be competing all really coming together. And I, I think we felt a lot of that this week. And it's in some ways a relief, but we know there's a lot more work to be done as we cover what comes next when the attorney general does give his conclusions to Congress. I trust you're going to be very busy. I have to say the show's called The Beat and the protests are behind you. Um, really living up to that. You've been able, I have to say, you've been able to speak very clearly. We can hear everything. I know sometimes when you're out there, you're wondering. We can hear you very well. And the last question before I let you go, and I know you're going to be working uh, the story for us all night, is when you walk through how that felt and what was going on uh, at DOJ, did you ever get clues, and not saying we know what's going to happen next, but clues about just the way Barr has done this? Because I'll give you my observation. I have watched him, and it seems that he's very carefully, wherever he can, trying to put out a united front with Mueller uh, and trying to suggest that they're on the same page, they're, they're collaborating, they obviously have a professional history. He didn't need to mention Mueller in the letter the way he did, that they're going to keep working together. Mueller finished tonight. Uh, did you see any evidence, clues, anything like that, because uh, you've been on the ground? You're picking up on exactly the right thing. I think the letter really codified some of the personality traits we've already seen from this new attorney general as we've been waiting for this report to be delivered here to him. He stayed calm. We saw him around the Justice Department this week. He eats a humble lunch with his staff in the cafeteria at the Justice Department, which is not normally anything you would recommend if you're going to have a nice lunch. He eats with his staff every day around noon. He seems to stick to his schedule. He sees reporters in the hallway. They might come up to him and say, it's today the day. He keeps a stoic face and keeps walking a lot like Mueller, that stoicism, right. that not that, being able to get caught up in the moment. That's come and through. Course, I'm, yes, I'm going to jump because we're, we're, we're hearing news from Senator Schumer, but uh, that's very interesting getting some of your views. Thank you. We're going to listen to live reaction now from Democratic leader Chuck Schumer. Evidence should be made public. The special counsel's investigation focused on questions that go to the integrity of our democracy itself whether foreign powers corruptly interfered in our elections, and whether unlawful means were used to hinder the investigation. The American people have a right to the truth. The watchword is transparency. In conclusion, the President himself has called without qualification for the report to be made public. There is no reason on God's green earth why Attorney General Barr should do any less. We're only going to take one question or two. Any? The indications are that there are no new indictments. Uh, that's the word coming out. Do you think that that is the case, that there's an apology to be made to the president? I think we should wait, to the f wait for the full report to be issued before jumping to any conclusions. Senator Schumer, I, I, I should say that again. I think we should wait for the full report to be made public before jumping to any conclusions. Senator Schumer, how confident are you that we're going to get the full depth of that report with a Trump-appointed attorney general? I think the demand of the public is overwhelming to see the report when it's on such a serious matter, and it will be made public. Public pressure will force it to be. Any sort of time frame you can foresee? No. Thank you, everybody. Last question to the Yankee fan. We've been listening to Democratic leader Senator Chuck Schumer. That marks the third Democrat we've heard from just in our coverage here on MSNBC, echoing really a united message we heard from uh, Senator Blumenthal on the Judiciary Committee and Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff in the House, all emphasizing that while we have big news tonight, I don't think anyone doubts that, Bob Mueller is done, he's filed his report, uh, they're all emphasizing that the next step is even more important than what he filed, which is what do we learn? What does Congress learn? What does America learn? Uh, up until tonight, at this moment, 6.40 p.m. on the East Coast, we've been hearing from reporters, from lawyers, from our experts. We haven't yet heard from some of the people who've directly interacted with the Mueller probe. And here on The Beat, that's something that we have been focused on throughout the 22 months, because these are the people that faced Mueller's investigators personally. And so now I turn...